So the nuclear deal um, imposes physical constraints uh, on Iran's nuclear program in terms of the number of centrifuges and the amount of low enriched uranium and heavy water and so forth that it can possess. <clears throat> and it also imposes uh, much more intrusive inspection um, methods in order to ensure that Iran is complying with the agreement. Uh, in exchange, Iran gets sanctions relief, especially sanctions relief on its access to the international financial market <clears throat> and on its ability to sell oil. So far, the Iranians have complied with the agreement, um, as verified by the International Atomic Energy Agency. In fact, since President Trump has taken office, the Iranians have been scrupulous about complying with the agreement because they fear that President Trump might take advantage of any uh, question about compliance or any ambiguity by uh, leaving the agreement. When President Obama was in office, the Iranians were playing games, testing limits. They would go over the amount of allowed low enriched uranium or heavy water in order to see how the administration would react. Since Trump has taken office, the Iranians have not gone over the limits by an ounce uh, or an inch. And I think it reflects the fact that they, especially President Rouhani, is benefiting from the agreement, even though the Iranians complain they're not getting all the sanctions relief they wanted. Nonetheless, they recognize that if the deal collapsed, it would have a very significant impact uh, on the Iranian economy, on plans that Rouhani has that, that my fellow panelists can talk about in more detail. And so far, the deal has held. The Iranians have complied. And even though Trump, <clears throat> of course, criticized the deal during the campaign, the U.S. really doesn't have a practical option to leave the agreement as long as Iran is in compliance because there are other countries that are party to the agreement, um, Russia, China, um, the British, French, and Germans. They support the agreement. They see it working well, and if the U.S. were to leave without cause, we would be blamed and it would be very difficult for us to reconstruct the coalition that made the sanctions pressure possible in the first place. So I think the deal in and of itself continues to be stable. The big question, and I know we'll talk about this in the course of the discussion, is the extent to which the U.S. and Iran competing on other important areas in the Middle East, in Yemen and Syria and Iraq, how much of that can bleed over and jeopardize the survival of the agreement?